Welcome back everybody, Patrick here, moving on with the weighted average cost of capital. In this video, we're going to solve this question here. And this question is already typed out in lecture notes and I provided the link in the description box. It's just a PDF, so you could print that out for your reference. So your company is an all equity firm that has 1 million shares, each priced at $50. The shares have a beta of 1.4 and they just paid a dividend of $6 that will grow at 3% forever. You're thinking of investing in a $20 million project that will be all equity finance and will provide cash flows of $3.5 million per year forever. Cost of financing will be $2 million should you accept the project. Now, whenever you get a question dealing with an all equity firm, what does that mean? Well, if we draw the balance sheet, that means that there's no debt because since it's all equity, so that right side is going to be composed of only equity. It's a 100% equity firm. And what's the value of the equity for this firm? Well, it has 1 million shares and they're each priced at $50. So 50 times 1 million gives us an equity value of 50 million, which means that the left side of the balance sheet is 50 million as well. Now, if we go back to the weighted average cost of capital formula, if the debt is zero, what that means is this whole expression here goes to zero as well, because this debt is going to be zero, zero over anything is just zero. So all of that would be zero. And then notice that the equity and the assets are equal. So this bracket here is going to be one. So what that implies is that the weighted average cost of capital of an all equity firm is just equal to its cost of equity, its RE. So whenever you see that all equity firm, just remember weighted average cost of capital is equal to the return on equity. So any projects that you take, usually you're discounting the cash flows of the projects by the weighted average cost of capital, well, since you're an all equity firm, you're just gonna be discounting the cash flows of a project by the return on equity, which is the same as the weighted average cost of capital. So notice in this question that the company is taking on a project where the cash flows are given, and we're wondering whether we should accept the project. So to find that out, we have to calculate the NPV of the project, and we have to discount all the cash flows to time zero and we can discount them with the weighted average cost of capital or the return on equity. So let's find what our return on equity is going to be in this question. And if you remember from previous videos, there's actually two ways to calculate the return on equity. We can calculate it with the kappa model, or we can calculate it with the dividend discount model. And notice in this question, they actually give us information for both of these. But notice that for the cap model, there's not enough information. We're given a beta of 1.4 for the shares, but for the cap model, we also need the risk-free rate, we need the market risk premium. Notice that there is no information given about that. So we know that we can't use the cap model to find this return on equity. And then the dividend discount model, notice that we're given the price of the shares, we're given the dollar value of the dividends, the dividends that were just paid today, and we're given the growth rate. So there's enough information for us to calculate what that return on equity is going to be with the dividend discount model. So let's draw out a timeline for this dividend discount model to see what is going on. So in time zero, what happened is the company just paid a dividend of $6. So that was in time zero, that's equal to D zero. Now, since they already paid that dividend, notice that that dividend is not gonna be part of the share price of $50. However, we can use that dividend that was just paid to figure out what's the next dividend gonna be in one year. What's that D one gonna be? Well, we can take that $6 and we can multiply it by one plus the growth rate, which is one plus 0.03. Right, the growth rate is 3%, so 6 times 1.03 gives us $6.18, $6.18. So we know that that is going to be the dividend 
in one year and notice that this is going to be the first dividend in a growing perpetuity because these dividends are going to grow at three percent forever and the general formula when you're finding the share price for a constant growth of dividends is you take the dividend in one year or one period and divide it by r minus g and let's fill out the variables that we have well we're given the price of the shares in time zero the price of the shares is fifty dollars the dividend in one period is the six dollars and eighteen cents we just solve for that the R is what we're solving for, that's a return on equity. So let's uh, label that RE. And then minus the growth rate, the growth rate we are given at 3%. So notice now that we have an equation with only one variable to solve for this return on equity. So to solve for that R, we can just cross multiply. So we could put this 50 over one. 1 times 6.18 is just 6.18. And then we would have 50 times r minus 0 0.03. Now we just have to solve for this r. So two things we can do. We can distribute the 50 inside the bracket. But in my opinion, it's just easier to divide both sides by 50. So we get rid of that. And when you take 6.18 divided by 50, you end up with 0.1236. And that's going to equal R minus 0 0.03. So then when we solve for that R, bring that negative 0 0.03 over. 0.1236 plus 0 0.013 gives us 0.1536 or 15.36%. So that there is the return on equity for this company, which is also the weighted average cost of capital. So 15.36%. And now what we can do is we can use this rate to discount the cash flows of the project that we're looking at to calculate its NPV. So to calculate the NPV of this project, let's first draw out a timeline. What is going on? So in time zero, this project's gonna cost us $20 million. So that's gonna be a negative cash flow in time zero of 20 million. And then it's gonna provide cash flows of $3.5 million per year. Notice that they don't say when the cash flows start, but let's just assume that they are starting in one year and they're going to last forever. So this is gonna be three and a half million. That's going to be a positive cash flow. This is three and a half and time three. That'll be three and a half. And that will just keep going on and on forever to time infinity. We're also told that there's a cost of financing for raising this equity of 20 million. And that's going to be $2 million. And the way you deal with any costs of financing is you just subtract that in time zero. So that's another negative cash flow that's going to happen in time zero in addition to the investment of the project. So the MPV is going to be what? It's going to be negative 20 million minus 2 million, right? That cost of financing. And then we have to discount all of these cash flows here from time one to time infinity. Notice that that is a perpetuity. And we know that the present value of a perpetuity in time zero, it's what? It's the cash flow in one year over the rate that we are discounting at. So this is going to be three and a half, the cash flow in time one divided by the discount rate and we calculated that to be 15.36, and that is a decimal when we input it here. So divided by 0.1536. And this whole calculation here will give us the NPV of this project. And when you do that calculation, you end up getting 0.786458, but that's in millions of dollars. So if you multiply that by a million, you would just end up getting an MPV of 786,000.
$458. So that is the MPV of the project. And because that's a positive MPV, you should accept the project. So that is the answer to this question. So a couple of takeaways from this question. Remember when you're dealing with an all equity firm, weighted average cost of capital is equal to the return on equity. So we have to calculate the return on equity and we have to figure out first, are we going to use the Kappa model or the dividend discount model? With the Kappa model, there wasn't enough information given, even though we were given this beta of 1.4. With the dividend discount model, there was enough information to calculate the return on equity. So we used that, found 15.36, and then we used that discount rate to discount these cash flows here when we were calculating the MPV of the project. MPV was positive, so we accept the project.